Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. My name is James Taylor. We are doing Advent of Code. We are doing 24 libraries in 24 days. We've done a few days of some really lightweight libraries that do one thing and we're trying to do a couple of bit heavier libraries now. The library I wanted to do was Paramico. Uh, Paramico is an amazing library which is the underpinnings of a lot of other things that go on in the Python world. It's a really, really good library. It's got a a very good um, user group, it's got a very good maintenance record. Um, what I, When I started looking into it, I've used Paramico a lot, but not directly, I've always used it indirectly. And what's really interesting when I started looking into it, I'll do a feature piece on Paramico, I started looking into it and realized that actually it's really difficult to use. In fact, it's, it's, it's web page documentation, it's direct use of Paramico itself is intended for users who need advanced or low level primitives or want to run an in Python SHD. It doesn't really say what you should use instead, um, so I'm going to show you what are those rather than this. Um, when you actually get into how Paramico works, there's a lot of detail about how SSH works, and that's why. Now, the thing about Paramico is it actually is a pure Python library. It says per Python, it actually uses cryptography, and cryptography has some C extensions, uh, but the majority of the connection it uses sockets and everything in Python, so it's really good for being cross-platform, it's really good at being able to understand what's going on with the connection. Whereas if you just wrap around something like a command like round SSH, you don't lose some of the information about what's going on if the SSH connection doesn't work. Whereas this intrinsically knows what happens in that connection. You'll know if you've got uh, like a firewall problem or if you've got an authentication problem. It can tell that natively in the code what's, what the issue is. So it's a really, really good library to use. Um, you're also not doing any weird uh, process spawning by spawning shell commands and things like that if you're trying to get around that. So, um, with Paramico saying it's very difficult to use, you've basically got two two big libraries that use it. One is called Fabric. Fabric is an amazing thing. It is both a framework and a library. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about it in library mode here. Where, and where the other one is Ansible. Ansible is more just a framework. If you want to just bring in the connection parts from Ansible, it's not as good as Fabric. It is good as a framework. It's, it's really good as a framework. It's probably got more people using it because it's supported by Red Hat than Fabric has as a framework. Um, I've used both quite heavily now. I've used Ansible a lot more this year than I had previously. But historically, I've used Fabric as a framework very heavily. Both are the, the current company I work at and the company I worked at previously. So over the last 10 to 15 years, I've done a talk at Nordev about uh, Fabric, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, well, I think it's all right. Well, I could do deployments whilst drinking. And so this is how safe it is to be able to redeploy servers on command. However, if you want to use it in code, rather, so if you want to just do repeatable tasks, I would say use it as a framework, right? Use Ansible or use Fabric as a framework. However, if you want to actually interact programmatically with an SHD, then use Fabric. And by interact programmatically, I mean you're going to connect to SSHD and then either take to run commands in the shell that it provides you, or you can put files or get files or do whatever you like. So with that in mind, let's do a demo of Fabric. So Fabric is really as a library, particularly as a library. So uh, from fabric import connection. That's the first thing we do. We say result equals connection. Uh, right hand dot local, uh, and we're going to set my user to pi because this is I'm connected up to my pies up here. That's going to create a connection. I want to run a command though. Uh, uname dash s. Okay. Now what happens is this will actually connect up to there. Under the hood of what it's doing is actually loading up um, um, my SSH keys or my environmental rail because this is running as my user uh, to log into the box. It's not actually going to ask me for authentication. It's just going to work out the box. Um, once that actually runs, and I'm sorry my, my network's being a bit slow, my computer's being a bit slow because I think I've got all my videos open. Um, that gives me a result and then I'll be able to do result of standard apps as well. Now the thing to watch here is this will actually print off. So one of the things you, you need to do or probably want to do is hide equals true, which just suppresses the output from the pa uh, power, uh, from the fabric and Paramico libraries directly, um, and then you can access it there. You can also access the status code of what you were running. Super, super powerful. Um, one of the things you can do very quickly, though, at this point, uh, that's just going to run in the background. One of the things you can do really quickly is say, I actually want to run this across lots of computers. Uh, maybe you're an evil genius and you're trying to load up uh, botnets. Um, one of the things you can do is you can import from fabric import serial group. Oh, very quickly, whilst it, whilst this is still running. 
Um, I suspect this is timing out. Um, is you can actually use the connection. You can actually use the connection result dot uh, with um, connection host name um, as con uh, con dot uh, run command like that, and then you can run this. You know, you can run multiple connect commands here, and it will it will be more efficient than doing the connection run every time. Similarly, you can also do uh, dot put. And you can do .get, I think, as well. Look at the documentation. Very easy to put files, get files, and so on. Um, so that is your is your basic thing. Now, the serial group one, though, is a little bit more fun. With the serial group, uh, result equals serial group. And then host name one, host name two. And then you can still do user equals pi. I hope they all have the same user, otherwise you can have problems here. And then you can do .run here. Now what that will do is actually give you an array of results back, um, or other dictionary of results back. And the results here, the dictionary actually will be the connection against it. So if you actually want to print these off, uh, what you actually need to do at that point is do um, for, for key value and then the key dot host name to match the host name back to what you typed in. So that's a string, but you'll actually get a connection object in the dictionary that comes out. The connection will be closed, but you will get a, a, a dictionary object. Um, and that's really all that I want to show of Fabric. It's an amazing little library. It's got some really, really good documentation about how to use it. Um, you start building up good, well, if you use it as a framework, you start building up good cookbooks. You start dealing with the edge case you're able to do. Do it lightweight, as my, is what I suggest in these things. Leave it a bit scripty. But that's it. That is Fabric in a complete nutshell. Um, and yeah, I, I would really recommend Fabric. Fabric wraps round. Paramico. Paramico is amazing. Fabric is really amazing as well. Uh, building on the shoulders of giants type situation. But it simplifies the use case. So if you are a developer and you just want to run a command or interact with a remote SSHD uh, remote server via SSH, then Fabric is the way forward. You can also do local agent forward as well. So you can actually make SSH tunnels on the fly and then connect via the SSH tunnel. So you can do all kinds of funky stuff with Fabric. Um, but Fabric just makes it easier to use the underlying Paramico library. Very, very solid, excellent library, 100% recommend it. Um, it's not my favourite because, of course, It's Dangerous is my favourite library, um, but it's right up there. It, I, I cannot give this enough uh, 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 promotion sort of thing. If you like these uh, little videos, uh, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and you'll see popping up hopefully some other videos you might be interested in looking at. Say so 24 videos in 24 days, um, and then I'm going to sleep through January, I think, at this rate. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much uh, for watching.